the school. As for that hire, as he was on the stage just a few minutes ago, he talked about a lot of things. And honestly, sitting behind the camera watching, it kind of reminded me of the movie Goodfellas, right? He's up there pointing to people in the crowd going, tell your mother I said hi. Just stuff like that. He controlled the stage. There was a charisma. There was just an energy about him, and it permeated throughout the arena. As for what he talked about in terms of this basketball team, he emphasized togetherness. He emphasized hard work, talked about his past and how his family was a Friday to Friday family, how they lived paycheck to paycheck, and that helped mold and shape him into the coach that he is and the style of coaching that he has. He demands hard work from his players. He wants them dedicated. He wants them in the arena, putting everything on the line every single day. And he knows that that is the path to the NBA. Something else that he talked about as he was on the stage, his ability to mold those players into professional basketball players. And that is going to be a huge selling point here for Coach Cal, because as he also mentioned on that stage, he doesn't have a team. He poked fun at the fact that he met them. He said that there were three guys back there and they were all transfers. He is literally starting from scratch. And it will be interesting to see exactly what this team will look like because it will be built in his image from day one. So we, there's no rollover from another coach. This is going to be John Calipari's team. And it's going to be interesting to see what exactly that is going to look like as people file out here behind me. It's also going to be interesting to see the success of that team as they hit the court this year and how that plays out for how long he's going to stay at this universe. Now, obviously, you don't want to be writing him off before he's even hit the court. But can we expect immediate success? And if that doesn't happen within a couple years, what does that contract look like that Kayla talked about just a few minutes ago? Now, he does have some incentives in that contract. If the team makes the tournament, he's going to get additional years added. All right, we are continuing our coverage of Calipari's arrival to Arkansas as he leads the Razorbacks and begins a brand new chapter. All right, uh, and again, you can, uh, can watch a lot of this on 5 Plus. In fact, uh, he is still making his way to the media room to answer questions from Arkansas media. We will have that on our 5 Plus app. It is free to download. You can stream all of our newscasts live straight to your smart TV. Uh, since it's not going to start between now and 7 o'clock, we do want to get you into primetime TV right here on Channel 5. So if you want to hear what he has to say to those reporters, you can do that on the 5 Plus app. If you need help doing that, 785-5000. Text the word PLUS. We will send you a link on how you can download that to your smart TV. That should start any moment now. He still has to make his way through that huge crowd oh, of people who want to shake his hand. Take selfies take with take him. Take selfies with him. Say hi to him. Uh, and so that'll be taking place hopefully within the next 10 or 15 minutes. It's kind of like the president is in the exactly, building. Exactly, yes. You know, everyone wants a piece of him. And he gave right. a phenomenal speech. The other big story of the day is this. <laughs> and how awful this is out here today, Bella. Oh, it's just looking nasty out there. Overcast skies, still some rain.
he spent 15, 20 minutes bragging about how great of a job this was. Um, and so if it's so great of a job, why don't you want it? And he kind of sat back in his chair a little bit and I think started to, to think about that. I'm sitting in the presence of a Hall of Fame coach talking about other coaches for my job and he's telling me how great of a job this is. If I'm not doing my job, if I don't ask him if he's interested, right? Murphy, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. We've heard varying reports about what the NIL is going to look like for men's basketball. What can sure. you say to, to that? I will say that uh, Coach Cal and I talked about NIL robustly. We've talked about it on the plane. Uh, him and I are on the same page of where it needs to be for us to be competitive. Uh, we've got s some ways to go to get there. Um, it, reports make it sound like it is a done deal and the money's in the bank. Um, what I will tell you, uh, that's not the case. Uh, we've got a pretty good program in place, but we're going to need the help uh, from people across this state uh, to make sure that we give Coach Cal the tools that he needs to put a great team on the floor, not only this year, but next year and the following year. Um, so uh, him and I are on the same page of what it needs to be, and it's my job to give him the tools to make sure that he can be successful. A week between, a, a week between jobs, one leaving, one coming in. Did you ever envision getting through it that quick and getting a grand slam home run to come talk about? Yeah, well, I mean, if you read the uh, reports, I didn't have it done by Saturday, and that wasn't quick enough, right? Um, but, um, you know, it, it took a little longer than maybe you wanted because I had to let him have time for this opportunity to marinate. And he, he was very intentional about he did not want to step on the national championship game on Monday night. And I know he was really disappointed when it leaked out I'm on here. Sunday night. I'm leaked from here. Not yeah. My way. So um, he, he was disappointed because um, he didn't want to overshadow what those young men and coaches from Purdue and UConn had gotten. So it took a little bit longer because uh, we were trying to be respectful of that game. And I was trying to be respectful of his consideration for this position. Obviously, we, we know John's an elite recruiter, but he really doesn't have a scholarship player right now. How confident are you that he can get a, a quality team put together in a pretty short period of time? Bob, I'll give you a short answer to that. I'm really confident that he can put a great team together pretty quickly. Hunter, how does this hire and the financial commitment involved impact your plans for Bud Walton Arena? Well, um, two separate funds, quite honestly. I mean, we're going to go on a capital campaign eventually once we get a final design for the renovation to Bud Walton Arena. Um, and so that's a totally separate capital campaign that we'll undertake sometime later this year. So I don't foresee it impacting the renovation to Bud Walton Arena. But what we have to make sure that uh, right now um, investing in bricks and mortar may not be the best decision as opposed to investing in our student athletes. And so I've really got to balance those two options. Can I get a two-parter? Two yeah, sure. Go ahead, two, Bob. Two-part. Um, when, when, when John asked him, which obviously that was a smart thing to do, when he expressed interest, what, what, was, what was your reaction? Um, and then if you want to name names, that's great, but I'm curious how many guys you talked to, how many coaches you talked to for, for the job. You know, the, the, the serious conversation. Yeah. Well, you guys have been with me through, I'll answer the second one first, through now two men's basketball searches and one football search. Uh, and I'm very thorough in that search process. It's a very tight, closed search process, but I don't just zero in on one person. Um, I didn't know for sure if he was going to take the job. And so I had to keep my search on going uh, while he was uh, taking in consideration the opportunity that was in front of him. So um, I talked to, I don't know, Bob, eight to ten different coaches about this job. And here's what I want to be clear about. In spite of the reports, there was only one person offered this job, and he's sitting right next to me. And I think it's interesting that his name never got out during the process because he wanted this job in the end. He wasn't looking for something else at his institution that he was at. All right, thank you, Hunter. Well, Coach, Coach, Kevin McPherson, I'll go about that. I mean, your Hall of Fame credentials, Final Four is everything you've been. What is it about Arkansas? Because everybody knows what you bring to the table, household name. What is it about Arkansas that brings you to the thought that you can get another Final Four on your resume at your fourth stop? Um, I called Calvin Sampson. He and I are dear friends. 
And I said, tell me about Hunter. Well, he almost jumped through the phone. And I said, T what are you talking about? I talked to his assistant who used to work for me, Bilal, and he said, when you need things done, then he goes and do does it. He's, he's, what can I do to help you? And then we're going to get it done. I mean, what he did at Houston, the building, the practice facility, all this stuff, and what Kelvin needed so he could coach basketball. Um, that got me to where I had to listen. Because I'm going to say it again, basketball coaches win games. Administrations win championships. And you know why? Because they want to. And it's important to them. And when we, the, the, some of the phone conversations, because the meeting we had, and as a matter of fact, he'll tell you the, the, the offer thing, how much time did we spend on it? You and I, 15 minutes. It was 15 minutes. Because I got what I needed to hear. Um, we spent no time on that. Um, and, you know, but it was a commitment to what he wanted to do. And working with somebody, you know, he's a basketball player. Were you any good? Not very good. Okay, was neither, like neither was I either, so we're good. We're on the same page. But, you know, and I'm, I'm excited about this. This program, you talk about some of the best jobs in the country. In basketball, this is one of them. We can say what we want. This is one of them. This is a state that I'm comfortable in. It's how I grew up. I can't wait to go around the state and meet people and be in uh, situations where they're going to say he's a regular guy, I hope. I don't think I'm this magician. I don't. People look at me different than I look at myself. And this thing, when we sat down, somebody said, what about Wednesday? Never entered my mind about coaching. One week ago. It never entered my mind. Thursday night was a, hey, I need you, my good friend John Tyson, who whatever John Tyson would ask me to do, I'm doing. I need you to meet with our AD. He's going to go through some stuff. I want you to talk to him and help him out. He's a good man. You're going to love meeting him. And we did. And then it was like all of a sudden, hey, what? Saturday and Sunday, we did. We just, I said, I'm not doing anything during this championship. These kids have done too much. They deserve it. It got out, and it cut, but we didn't speak. Neither one of us spoke. Like, we're not talking about it. You can insinuate all you want. And then I needed a day, and then it was Sunday or uh, Tuesday morning, and it was okay, let's go with this. So, um, you know, to be at a place like this, to do what I was able to do at Kentucky, I was happy. I mean, I loved it there. My wife loved it there. You know what? 15 years I was there. Did everything I could. Gave every ounce of everything I could. And you know what? I'm jacked about another opportunity. Like, I'm like, let's go. Now, I met with the team. There is no team. So now, I got to... Hunter's really extremely confident, but we got to get a roster together. And some of it is a little bit of everything, but we will. It may take a little longer because there are kids that put their name in the NBA draft that are going to go through some of the process, which means do you wait for that kid or do you go take somebody that's not quite as good and you're going to be juggling balls? That's what we do now. So, and I, I said it out there, my initial thing when he asked me the question, I can't leave this team, the players. And, and it was Kelvin that said to me, what are you talking about? They can go wherever they want. They can go wherever they want if you stay. If you go or stay. They can go to another school, they can stay, they can go pro, they can do what they want now. And I said, you know what? I want to be happy with this, and I want to go and say, let's do this together. And I told Hunter, it's, you got, you, administrations win championships, let's do this together. I love seeing the president out there, the chancellor. Is he pre chancellor. chancellor out there? I'm sorry. Um, so it was fun.
John Anthony Christensen, WholeHogSports.com. You mentioned a little bit, you know, roster building and construction along those lines. Can you just talk about what you're looking at for your first roster here at Arkansas? What are the qualities you're looking at in players and along those lines? Um, the if you're not into basketball, you won't come here. If you're smoking, drinking, club and chasing, this is about being at a place that is zeroed in on a culture that creates professional habits, and that includes academically. I mean, we didn't have any issues. I know we, oh, you had one year players, that, yeah, but they all finished the term. We didn't have any APR problems. We had 32 kids graduate. We had six graduate in three years. You can do all that. You can care about the kids and still win. Um, what's changed a little bit is that kids are older. Now, do you know why they're older? Why do you think we played against a 26-year-old in the NCAA tournament, like my 19-year-olds? Why was that? COVID a little bit. They're given a bunch of waivers, and no one wants to leave because NIL. I'm going to stay here. I'll make more here than I would going and getting a job, and I'm still playing basketball. So that's one of the issues, which means physical toughness and physicality matter more now than ever before. Now, you can have freshmen, but they better be physically tough. Um, the transfer portal, you're getting some older players. But the other thing you have to understand, both Purdue and Connecticut had players that had been in their program three years. They didn't leave. They were there three years. So it's not just go get a transfer because a transfer is from one year to a many times. Does that answer? Sure. Hey, Coach. Trey Biddy with Hog Sports, 24-7 Sports. I was curious about your, your staff and obviously the dead period and so I think Friday starts back up with being able to contact. Like, how do, where do you go with bringing your staff together and, and jumping into the world of recruiting and transfer portal? That's one of the first things I got to get done. And the only thing I can tell you, I, I had advice from Pat Nardelli, who's probably watching this. When I was in Moon Township and I was working at Pitt, and I grew up in Moon Township, and he was one of our, the people that supported the men's basketball in high school, okay? And I was taking the UMass job, and he grabbed me and said, let me tell you something, kid. You can have a bad deal with good people because stuff happens. But you can never have a good deal with bad people. I don't care what it smells like, what they look like, who they can bring to you. Stay away from bad people, whether it's staff or players. And that's what I've tried to do. I just, if I, it's a recruit, I'll walk. If it's a staff member, I may meet them once or twice, and that's it. I'm not, we're not going that way. Whatever we do, we'll have good people who are driven and wired, uh, knowing that there's an expectation here and not being afraid of it. I told my wife, you really want to do this? Yep. You're brave. You're courageous. We're going to go, you know. And, and again, nothing that happened about me coming here, I was running to this. Fans don't move me that way. Do we have some fans here that'll be a little riled up? It's everywhere in the country. It's not just at Kentucky, Arkansas, or wherever else you want to. There, like I said, if, if I'm not going to take or, or uh, ask for somebody's advice, I'm certainly not going to listen to their criticism. So it is part of what we do. This fan base is so engaged, I love it. I don't think I'm going to have to sell tickets, am I? I don't think you will. Yeah. No. We'll sell them for you. There you go. With Arkansas Democrat is that I'm still trying to wrap my mind about seeing you in that Razorback red. But uh, this is kind of a two-part. Can I tell you, I went on the plane, and he had this. I had a dark blue thing on, and I was in the back by myself because I was trying to get ready for this. And his wife and my wife, and they're in the middle, and, and I took my thing off the sweat and I was putting this on and somebody peeked their head I said I am not Eric Musselman you do not want to look back here <laughs> and I said and if you did look back here you're going to turn the plane around and go back to Lexington drop him off um, wh when did you actually tell Hunter yes probably Monday night 
But I was, my, my thing to him probably at some point on Sunday was, look, I feel really good. Just give me time. This is going to play. Just, but I think Monday night was when it was done. But it was probably 11 o'clock at night or later. And, um, and then, you know, Tuesday morning, you know, I did the uh, video. And then, you know, my wife did a video. And then we did this. You alluded to it. Out you imagine there. it happened in like three days, four days. I guess it did. Um, you, you alluded to it out there. I mean, you, you're not because not of you personally, because you're a Kentucky coach. You know, you got booed a lot and all that. Did, could you ever imagine a scenario where you'd be here, you know, as the Arkansas coach and being cheered and all that? And then when, when, no, when you, when I you could had a not shot? ever envision yeah. that. It was it was good feeling to be honest with you, but no. And then when you talked to Coach Burroughs back in 07, that's when Dana Altman took the job, so I hope things work out better than that did. But, but um, could you imagine 17 years later you'd, you'd be back here w with the job? I, I didn't think so Wednesday because it never entered my mind. I wasn't looking for jobs. There were some other people that called me during this period of time. I don't know if they knew, well, maybe he wants to leave. They lost a game. and. I mean, one game doesn't make a career or what you've done. So I wasn't saying looking or, you know, and then all of a sudden we meet. I really felt good about him. I liked the vibe. I liked what I was hearing. Then it kind of played from there. But um, the, the, that press conference, I'd never seen anything like it. Like that right there was, for me, like, we got off the plane. I, I was looking for Joe Biden. I'm like, where? What is going on here? Uh, Courtney Mims, Pig Trail Nation, Coach. You mentioned and you joked about it a little bit. Maybe not joking in your eyes that there is no roster here with NIL, the transfer portal. How do you plan on hitting the ground running there? I can't tell you that. <laughs> I'd be telling everybody else that. Well, look, there's uh, there's going to be enough kids that would want to play here for us that will be fine. I really believe that. And, uh, you know, whether I was at UMass or Memphis or at Kentucky, we, you know, kids want to play for us. And hopefully it's because we make, we put them first and their families know it. Southwest times record. A lot of, your former players, the NBA guys, reached out, you know, commenting and stuff, and it seemed, you know, that loyalty to you, to not only Kentucky but you individually. How much does that mean to you, and how much does that benefit you as now you try to turn the page and recruit here to Arkansas? Well, you know, when you do everything you can to help a young man, you hold him accountable, you challenge him, you sometimes are aggressive but they know you care enough to keep them doing what they're doing. And they also know you never blame players when you lose, never. You take responsibility as a grown man, you take responsibility. You never throw a player under the bus. And they know that. And they know I've stood up for every one of them. So at this point, my guess would be, and I haven't seen it, I haven't looked at the uh, internet, I'm not a big internet guy, um, but if you tell me that they're, they were saying good stuff that makes me feel good, makes me, it confirms what we're doing and how we're doing it. Coach, hi, Robin Hearn, 5 News. I know you say you're not a big internet guy, but you seem social media savvy. Have you thought of a new at name yet? A new what? Twitter <laughs> at name. It's at UK. Have you thought of a new name yet for Twitter? L okay, so. <laughs> Let me start by telling you, folks, I don't have a computer. I don't have a computer. I have an iPad because when I travel, there's movies on it, but also because I can put film on it and tape and stuff, and I know how to get, most cases, an iPad. I don't have a computer. I have never done Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Chit Chat, whatever they are. <laughs> I have never done those myself. So I've always had someone do it. Now I'll tell them what to put out. Now, the responses are none of my business. 
If you like it, you don't like it, it is not my business. I don't care. And if you want to get nasty, have at it. Go to bed mad, but I didn't read it. So you're asking me something, to be honest, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> but we, I think social media is great for the fans. Did, did they put out the, the poster I talked about? Is that crazy? It was behind my desk. And my assistant says, did you look behind you? And I looked, and it was Nolan Richardson and Corliss. And I'm like, this is crazy. And I sent it to Coach Richardson. He said, I don't look like It does look like him. It looks just like him. <laughs> Coach Andrew Hutchinson with Best of Arkansas Sports. Uh, this state's given you a couple of pretty good players through the years at Kentucky. I'm just Malik curious. hit me, said he's coming in the building. Marcus <laughs> hit me, too. I'm curious. That there's some really good talent coming up through the state, so you can't talk specifics. But what's kind of your approach to maybe the in-state recruiting? Are those you know, extra priority, or is it more just a national approach? That's the approach? first place you look. Are they good kids, and are they good enough? If they are, we'll recruit them. I did the same thing at Kentucky. Derek Willis, Dominic Hawkins. Some of them are different paths now. It may take them a little longer, but so what? Those kids are all professional. Uh, Reed, Shepard. I mean, why did he take him? What did he not? He's never going to play him. He's not. He, 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 he's, what? I play the best players. Well, you didn't start him. He's fine. He's going to be a lottery pick. How about that? But I'll do the same here. Archie Goodwin was a good player for us. Malik was a really good player for us. I have to tell you, Malik never thought he took a bad shot. And the reason was because he got it off. What do you mean? What are you doing? You got two people. I got it off. I mean, but one of the greatest kids, really smart. His mother already hit me. I'm making, I'm cooking. Marcus already called me. Mom's going to cook for us. So, you know, it, she said she's coming to practice. I love it. Come on. And, and I just told Coach Owens, who I was with at Kansas, my, my first job. I was a volunteer assistant. So you know what a volunteer makes, right? That's what I, how I started with Ted Owens. Um, he was here tonight. Isn't that great? I mean, he came from Tulsa to be here. So I got it. You got it, your hand up, and I can't. Who, why aren't they giving you a mic? Are you somebody I should know? OK. That's more Fox 16 than the buzz in Little Rock 103.7. You mentioned Nolan Richardson a minute ago. You mentioned him out there. The conversation, you never got to it. How did that go, if you'd share any of that with us? He, when I asked Hunter and I asked John, may have asked somebody else, what did Coach Richardson say about me being hired? And he said, what he said was, a great hire because he cares about kids. Made my day. Made my day. And then I called, I sent him the poster, and then I called him. He sounds great. He sounds like he always sounded. Now, I haven't been in his company yet, but I'm telling you what I heard. And we talked about the game where he got smashed. And uh, he laughed. He said, you know what? You, and that, it just shows you anybody can beat anybody in one game. We beat, they had the team back. They had 10 guys. We beat their brains in. It was 30. He knew, he knew what happened in the game. We talked about it. He talked about his players. And I told him, you're always welcome here. I had Coach Hall at almost every practice I had before he got ill tell me to play the 1-3-1. I imagine he'll tell me you got to press more. Uh, Brandon Marcello, 24-7 Sports and CBS Sports. I was wondering, I know 17 years ago you had the opportunity to maybe come here, and you provided the reason why you didn't, but have you ever thought back to what your life would have been like if you decided to leave then and what Arkansas would have been like over the years? I haven't. Um, I don't want to get all spiritual on you. I'm Catholic. Um, making sure we have a Catholic church here in town. Hunter said we got one on campus, but uh, I think you're moved like I was moved to come here. You don't know why until you look back and they say, here's why. You know, why was I pushed to Kentucky? No idea, but I was. 
And why was I pushed here? Why did we get together? Why did John Tyson even pick up the phone and call me? And I'm not saying no to John. Now, I'm not telling, he ain't telling me to take a job or not, but if he wants me to do something, I'm going to listen because he's been a great friend of mine. Why did it happen? I even asked him, why would you even call me? He said, because I didn't want to live with regrets, knowing that I could call you and I could get you to meet with Hunter. That's what he said to me. He said, well, thank you. So why did it happen? If you believe what I believe, things happen for a reason. You're pushed to areas. There's something that I'm supposed to do here. I don't want my tombstone to have how many wins or Hall of Fame or national. Ch I want it to be about how many lives you've touched and changed and made for the positive. So why? I don't know. What would have happened back then? Hopefully something really good that I was able to be involved in and help and, and do. Hey, Coach Scotty Bordelon with Natty State Sports. Uh, you talked earlier tonight out there about being a player's first coach. Who in your life embedded that in you? Larry Brown told me early in my career, um, if you care about the kids, authentically care about the kids. And this was when I was at Kansas with him. You'll always have a job because they'll always want to play for you. And whatever you do, they'll want to come to you. They'll want to play. If you authentically care, and the great thing about kids, they can smell it. They know you're fraud. They know it. They're not. And that's what he taught me early. And do you add value? If you add value to young people, you're always going to have a job. That means someone's going to say, I want him to coach my guys. And I've lived by the two things, good people and care. Care more than anybody else. Now, caring doesn't mean you're soft. Caring doesn't mean you're good. Come on, you watch me, coach. Have you ever been in my practices, anybody here? Bob, you never were in a practice? I was never invited. Well, you wouldn't have been. <laughs> you would have scouted. I'm not going to do that. But, I mean, they're hard. Now, I don't swear and cuss and throw balls and punch. That's not who I am. But the standard is really high. And my job is to help them do stuff they didn't think they could do and then let them feel good about that. And that's what I try to do. Um, folks, is this it? Good. Um, I didn't mean that. <laughs> yes, I did. Um, really appreciate everything today. And um, one of the things I told that the, the couple players that were part of the team stuff, I, I feel bad for them. Like, I feel bad that they're going through this. Now, would they have gone through it whether the coach left? I feel bad that my guys are going through it. But it's different than it was 10 years ago, five years ago, four years ago. They now have the ability to do what they choose to do. So um, I'm looking forward to this. You can tell I'm excited. Um, the fans seem to be excited. Um, I haven't coasted down. I don't have a team. Please, let me get stuff together. Then we'll all be excited. Thank you, Thanks. Thank you.